Now, Charlene Hunter Gold, along with Hamilton Holmes, they were the first two African Americans to integrate the University of Georgia. Charlene Hunter Gold was just recently here speaking about memories she shared with Nelson Mandela, and I got a chance to speak with her, and I also got a chance to speak with one of her classmates, Kitty Everett, um, to talk about what life was like, what student life was like 50 years ago. Emotions ran high after Charlene Hunter Gold gave a speech at the university a couple weeks ago. It was overwhelmingly emotional. I was on the verge of tears the whole see, <laughs> the whole time that she was speaking. Um, it's a great privilege to have been part of her life in you know a very small way, but I, f I feel totally and completely. Connected. But Everett didn't always feel this connected to her former classmate Hunter Gold 50 years ago when the University of Georgia first became integrated. She says segregation was all she knew. That's all I knew. That was my total frame of reference. And, uh, and not only did I not know certain things, but I didn't know that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I had no concept. Mm -hmm. Clueless. Mm -hmm. Completely. As she flips through her college years, Everett tries to remember every detail of how student life used to be at the university. There was always something in the red and black about who was going with whom, who got <laughs> pinned, or who got lavaliered, or who got engaged, and it was published. But she says there's one vivid memory she'll never forget, and that's the night a riot broke out after a home basketball game. It turned into a mob rather than just a congregation of students. It was feeling... Uh, inherently violent, like anything could happen. And then the chanting started. What were the chants? Oh, they're awful. And it's going to be hard for me to say what they said, but I'm going to do it because that was the reality of it. Uh, they were chanting two, four, six, eight. We don't want to integrate. Mm -hmm. Two, four, eight, six. Go home, you nigger bitch. Mm -hmm. Two, four, uh, let me see. Eight, eight, six, four, two, leave the campus, you jigaboo. Mm -hmm. So it was all just so dark. And I, the word evil comes up. It seemed evil then. It seems evil now. But in the midst of the darkness, Charlene says she wasn't scared. I was never afraid because my grandmother, my father's mother, my grandfather was a preacher, but my grandmother was the saint. And many years ago, she taught me a Bible verse that I had no idea how much it would come in handy in later years. But it was the 23rd Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And I'm not sure I heard those words, but they were internalized in my soul. And so I was never once afraid. You know, I think about the journey she was on at that time. And, and only in retrospect, I mean, I think only in retrospect can we could fully appreciate what was happening. It was like she tilted the world mm -hmm. for everybody, not just for the black community, but for the white community as well. I just think it took the white community much longer to assimilate all these events mm -hmm. and see how they empowered us and me as well to be more authentic, uh, more daring, more in charge of who we are instead of um, letting others determine that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I think she had a huge impact on everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, s being a part of that event, seeing her twice since then and watching her religiously for 10 years on the McNeil Lear Hour, mm -hmm. you know, I've remained connected uh, emotionally to her. And the connection, even though she, she wouldn't have an absolute clue who I am, mm -hmm. of course, um, has grown stronger to me over the years emotionally. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you just saw in that piece, student life here 50 years ago was nothing like we could ever imagine how it is today. So true, Samantha. You talked about the history, and that's something that was highlighted in your piece. It's also something that I spoke about with Zoe Johnson. She is the Multicultural Services Director for the University of Georgia. And she and I talked about how people often think being reminded of the history and the, the negative connotation attached to it uh, creates just 
not so much of a positive limelight, mm -hmm. but she says there's so much positive that can come out of it because when you remind yourself of the past, you're able to create a better future. I definitely agree with her on that because if we don't know our history, we're going to tend to repeat ourselves. Exactly. And that's one thing that the, the department is really trying to do. They don't want to repeat what has happened, especially with the BAC. Mm -hmm. um, we have come so far. Um, and she, she says their focus is to sort of express a growing movement. Um, in terms of being able to embrace the diversity that's on campus because we have students from all walks of life that come here. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you know, we're here to get an education. We're also here to work with others. And if we can't learn to master that here, how are we gonna do that out in the workforce? Now, when you say growing movement, what does the department really like plan on doing? Well, she, she really explains it in a very pivotal way. So mm -hmm. just take a listen and see what she has to say. The work of multicultural services and programs really supports the university's mission to really support an understanding of and respect for cultural differences necessary for an educated citizenry. So our programs and services really focus on the core values of social justice, um, leadership, civic engagement, um, also student support, advocacy, and community. So everything in terms of um, programs, events, are really going to focus pivotally on those key dimensions. I think it's important that we continue to um, be in conversation about issues of diversity and inclusion. Um, I think the worst thing that we could do is to be silent um, on such an important issue that really matters to all of us. Um, and so I, I thank you for doing this story and I thank the others that are out and about on campus doing this important work and then we'll continue to do that um, no matter what path they may follow. We can all agree that student life on campus has changed dramatically ever since the first two African-American students enrolled at UGA. And as Samantha pointed out, Charlene Hunter Galt was one of the first black students to go to Georgia, and that was no easy feat. And that happened more than 50 years ago. Most of the students on campus weren't even born. In 2013, only 7% of UGA's undergraduate population identified as African-Americans. So we wanted to see if Mrs. Hunter Galt's efforts to diversify the the campus have actually inspired current students to take action. Now with Greek life being such an integral part of student participation, we spoke with two amazing students here that have left a huge mark on campus even before they graduate in May. I spoke with Sydney Adams who's a member of the Alpha Chi Omega sorority and four years ago she was known as the black girl in a white sorority. I also spoke with Andre Sutton, who's the president of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, which is a black intercollegiate fraternity on campus. We spoke with them about how far we've come as a campus and how much further they think we need to go.